Hi friends, in this video I am going to discuss about VFD basics. VFD stands for Variable Frequency Drive and this is commonly used in industry for controlling the speed of AC induction motors and I will also discuss about the different methods of interfacing the VFD to PLC. PLC stands for Programmable Logic Controller and this is used in industry for automation purpose. And this is the construction of a typical induction motor and you can see here there are different parts of all these stator windings and rotor are important. And whenever the uh, power is applied to the stator winding, the uh, rotating magnetic field is uh, generated and this will interact with the rotor and causes the rotor to rotate. And here you can see these are the windings of the stator and the number of times the each stator uh, uh, phase winding repeats, uh, it will uh, define uh, the pole of, uh, that is the number of poles of that particular motor. Here we can see particular phase winding is repeated two times. So this is a two pole uh, uh, three phase induction motor and the speed of the AC induction motor is given by uh, n equal to 120 F by P where F is the frequency uh, that is uh, operation of that particular induction motor and P is the number of poles as the number of poles are fixed for a particular motor so for in order to vary the speed of the induction motor the frequency need to be varied and this is done by using this uh, variable frequency drive. The VFT or that is also known as inverter uh, in addition to varying the speed it can also uh, start the motor slowly and steadily and if you are not he using the VFT for a particular motor uh, as the motor starting current are very high generally it is of 6 times of the rated current so there are uh, some starters or uh, soft, uh, that is a start delta starter or a soft starter need to be used. And if you are using VFD uh, for your application, so there is no need of using any starters. And it will also control the torque and acceleration, deacceleration. It will also gives the braking facility for your uh, induction motor. And this is the typical block diagram of the VFD. And this is a three phase uh, rectifier. So which takes the power from the uh, utility line and it uh, converts to DC and this is the DC link there is a capacitor bank and which uh, having two advantages it uh, reduces the ripple of the DC and also it will act as a buffer for the inverter. So and this is the uh, important part for, of the VFD it is inverter which converts this uh, DC to AC and it will gives to the motor and depending upon the speed that is selected so the frequency is varied by this inverter and this inverter is controlled by a uh, processors which are uh, having an, uh, complex algorithms and this is the block diagram here you can see this is the drive and uh, which uh, gives uh, the signals to the motor and uh, whether the motor is rotating a particular speed or not so some feedback signal need to be taken it can uh, be taken through an encoder or it can be a tachometer and this actual uh, speed and the reference speed is compared and uh, the drive will gives the further uh, command uh, uh, to the motor for increasing or decreasing the speed of uh, the motor and this is the PWM control of uh, the VFT. Here you can see, so the on-off uh, pulses, that is on-off uh, time duration of these uh, pulses are varied. So if you vary this on-off duration of the pulses, the voltage is varied. And as if you can see, these voltages, that is pulses are applied to the stator winding as the stator is nothing but inductor and it will oppose the sudden uh, rate of uh, uh, change of current. And uh, this, whenever a... Uh, uh, pulse is applied so there is a uh, linear that is ramp uh, is generated in the current and these pulses are switched on and off in such a way that this uh, uh, in the stator winding a sinusoidal uh, current is generated here you can see how this uh, PWM uh, will control the uh, voltage the shorter on duration will generate the lower voltage and higher on duration it will generate the higher voltage here we can see the V average is uh, equal to 1 by t into integral of 0 to t vn into dt so vn is the uh, this pulse voltage and if you increase the on on duration so higher voltage will be generated and if you decrease the on of uh, that is uh, on duration lower voltage is uh, generated this is the fixed rate of time if you see this is the depends t depends upon the frequency and in a particular frequency if it on or on time is more so the average voltage is high and if this on time is less the average voltage is low so in this way by using this pwm the voltage and the frequency is controlled in the vft and here you can see the torque and speed characteristics of different uh, loads 
uh, that uh, where these induction motors are used here you can see the speed and uh, torque uh, so on the x and y axis and for a particular application like compressor and conveyor so even though the speed is varied the torque requirement is constant and if you see in other application like pump and a fan so whenever the speed is uh, increasing the torque uh, is increasing in a non-linear way that is uh, in terms of the square that is the torque is proportional square of the speed and where you can see other uh, loads extruder and mixer there is an uh, other non-linear non relationship and the power that is power that is consumed by the motor is proportional to the speed into torque so the, here we can see the, by reducing the speed the power that is consumed by the uh, uh, motor is reduced even if your application is not requiring an, uh, that is base speed uh, then you can reduce the motor and you can operate and we are having energy saving and here you can see the energy saving how uh, is achieved with VFT and uh, this energy saving is more uh, uh, evident in uh, uh, loads like fans and pumps which is having a non-linear linearship between the torque and the speed here you can see so there is a torque is proportional to the square of the speed so this is the torque and the, uh, here you can see as uh, power is uh, equal to torque into speed then uh, the power uh, is proportional to the uh, cube of the speed so in these applications so if uh, a 10 percent reduction in speed will also result in a uh, very uh, drastic reduction in the power so 35 percent reduction in the power we can achieve achieve so this is where the vft plays a vital role in energy savings so if your application is not requiring the uh, base speed of the particular motor you can use the vft and you can operate at a lower speed and have an uh, good energy savings and uh, this is the v by f control for of the vft and this is uh, control commonly is uh, uh, available in all your uh, standard VFDs and there are other controls also and uh, for different applications these uh, controls will vary like uh, uh, flux control and other controls are available and in this video mainly I am discussing about V by F control that is volts uh, uh, per hedge control of the VFD here we can see the flux that is generated uh, by the stator uh, windings is uh, proportional to be the voltage by frequency and the torque you can see that is also uh, proportional to the this flux so in order for achieving the constant torque so the v by f should always uh, need to be uh, at a constant ratio and if you take for a 460 volts uh, and 60 h motor the v by f is uh, 7.67 and this need to be maintained at a constant value even though if you are uh, uh, varying the frequency for varying the uh, speed and for 230 volt 60 h motor so the v by f is 3.8 volts per h and this value need to be maintained uh, at a constant value in this v by f control here you can see the volts per h control of the vft so for varying the speed so the frequency is varied so as the frequency is varied for uh, in order to achieving the constant ratio the voltage also need to be increased here you can see at uh, zero um, at this base speed for example if you see both are at lower value whenever the frequency is increased for increasing the uh, speed of the motor the voltage also is increased and here you can see for achieving the base speed of for uh, this is 68 is the base frequency and for achieving this base speed so this uh, voltage also need to be increased because for maintaining the v by f a constant value so that uh, the uh, flux is constant and also the torque generated is constant so we here you can see as uh, this uh, constant uh, that is uh, v by f is always constant so irrespective of the speed so this is known as a constant torque region and here you can see this uh, above the base speed that is 60 h the voltage is not further increased so in this case uh, this uh, frequency increase will increase the speed of the uh, motor above the base speed but there is a decrease in the torque so because of this this is known as constant power region because power is uh, equal to the speed into torque so as the speed is increased the torque is decreased so the power is always constant in this region and in this region the torque is constant 
the VFD allows to operate motors into an extended speed range that is over speeding so which is not uh, possible if you are not using the VFD so with the VFD you can operate uh, the motor above the uh, base speed that is a 60 H uh, of the uh, rated frequency of the motor and uh, this uh, discuss so this is the uh, constant torque region because the torque is always constant because v b v by f is maintained at a constant uh, value that is 7.87 for uh, 460 volt 60 h uh, motor and above the base p so the voltage is not increased because of that the v by f ratio decreases because of the v by f ratio decreases the flux decreases and because of that the torque is also uh, decreased because uh, the flux is proportional to the torque and because of that above the base speed uh, the torque is uh, decreasing and this is uh, reason is known as the constant uh, power region and these are the different applications so here you can see so this is the plc modules so through digital input and digital output uh, so the motor is uh, controlled uh, so this plc is giving signal to this uh, drive and this drive is uh, giving uh, this uh, uh, power to the motor for controlling uh, this um, motor and this is the other application so where uh, these uh, blower uh, which is controlled by a motor so which uh, controls uh, the flue gases of a particular uh, plant so this uh, drive is so this motor is controlled through a drive so this is the drive so which is uh, taking the feedback uh, from this uh, uh, stack so the flow sensor is mounted so depending upon the requirement so means at a particular rate the flue gases has to flow so for that so the flow sensor will measure that uh, flow rate and it uh, drives uh, the uh, motor and the blower for achieving the desired uh, flow rate and here you can see plc controls vfd using analog signal that is 0 to 10 volts and 4 to 20 milliampere these are the industry standards and also using the digital signal because if you want to uh, control the speed we need to give analog signal and these analog signals are uh, given by the plc through the analog uh, output modules and any uh, status that is starting and starting uh, stopping of the uh, motor it can be controlled by using a digital signal and other options are field bus uh, uh, protocols so there are uh, serial uh, field bus protocols which will uh, eliminate the need of any extra modules uh, need to be connecting the plc so this is a uh, field bus protocols are supported by most of the uh, plc cpus so there is no need of having any extra uh, analog input and digital uh, um, input or output modules for controlling the drives here we can see so this is the plc and this is controlling the vfd by using uh, the uh, digital input digital output and uh, the analog uh, output so depending upon the speed requirement the plc will give the command through analog output to the vfd and vfd will uh, drives the motor and there are uh, start stop and other uh, digital uh, um, uh, signals so that are uh, given by the uh, plc and this is one way of controlling uh, the induction motor by using plc and vfd so here you can see so this is the plc is supporting modbus protocol so and this drive is also having that uh, uh, protocol so there is no need of any analog and digital signal so this uh, field bus is having addresses that is registers so depending upon the speed requirement the plc will uh, gives uh, the update uh, the uh, registers and this vfd will uh, controls the induction motor as per the plc commands so here the advantage is there is no need of any extra wires only by using uh, limited wires uh, as per the protocol so the drive can be interfaced and controlled and these are the siemens drives uh, you can see this is the drive g120 drives and this is connected to a motor and this drive is supporting the profinet so this is the CPU uh, that is uh, Siemens uh, PLC so which is also having this uh, uh, protocol support that is Profinet and this uh, KTP600 is the HMI panel which is also having the Profinet uh, interface and here you can see these all these drive uh, C, uh, PLC and this HMI are connected in bus topology 
and this g120 is also having profibus so this is other way of controlling so this uh, this s7 uh, is also having profibus uh, facility and this is s7 is also having uh, this ethernet uh, port and uh, this through this ethernet port it is connected to hmi and through this profibus port it is connected uh, to drive and depending upon the program so the uh, cpu will um, gives commands to the drive and the drive will uh, controls the motor and this is the wiring diagram here you can see in uh, how the drive controls uh, this uh, motor uh, through the profinet uh, field bus this uh, cpu that is plc will gives commands uh, through the profinet uh, to the drive and this give uh, it controls uh, this motor and the uh, the HMI, there are different requirements in monitoring the speed and uh, controlling the speed of this motor through HMI. So, the HMI panel is also connected uh, through it, uh, Profinet. And this is the how this uh, Profibus is used for controlling the speed that is uh, uh, VFT. So, this is the Profibus port of the Siemens. So, this Profibus port is connected and there is a LAN Ethernet port which is uh, connected to the HMI there are two separate ports and two separate protocols are used in this uh, uh, configuration so there is so the different ways and different interfaces are available for controlling the drives thank you for watching my video